Hi, welcome to Now in Android episode number 33. First up, Mad Skills. So the series continues on and on and on, which was the original intention. So I'm glad to see that there's excellent new technical content coming out week by week by week. Uh, we finished up the previous series on Kotlin and Jetpack APIs. Um, there were a couple of episodes since the last Now in Android. First of all, we did a live stream Q&A with some of the people that uh, work on these technologies. So they answered your questions in a live stream chat on YouTube. That is recorded, so you can check that out and find out how that conversation went. And finally, there's a wrap-up blog uh, about all the stuff that was covered in that series. Uh, and that has links to all of the videos and the content and other related content as well. So check that out for the details in case you didn't see the shows or didn't catch the links already. Motion Layout was the next series that has been going for, I think, three weeks so far. So there's three episodes that Sean McQuinlan has posted so far uh, talking about Motion Layout, not just the API, but also the visual tool that makes it a lot easier to create rich UI animations that animate in very custom and, and rich ways between states in your application. So the first episode was on constraint set animations. Uh, this describes how you use constraint sets. That's basically the before and after states that you animate from and two. Uh, uh, so how you create rich animations using constraint sets. Then he went in in the next episode into keyframes, which is something that you can use to change what the properties are that you animate between. And this helps you create richer animations so that you can vary, let's say, a, a path between the states um, so that you don't take the default linear approach of just moving from here to there over a straight line, but you can actually change properties along the way and customize how that animation really comes across to the user. And then finally, the third episode posted uh, just this week was multiple constraint sets. So as I said, the constraint sets are the before and after states, but you can actually create in between states to define states that the user is going to transition between, again, helping you to create richer and more complex animations uh, for these motion layout UI animations. So check out those episodes and tune in next week for another episode. And then we'll wrap it up in a couple of weeks with a Q&A uh, with some of the folks that work on motion layout. Next up, Android X. As usual, tons of things released, incremental releases, alpha, beta, uh, probably pre-alpha somewhere in there, RC, all of that stuff. I want to call out in particular a couple of the stable releases that came out recently that were interesting and worth checking out. First of all, Autofill 1.1. This is a version that adds APIs in the Android X library that sync with some of the capabilities and APIs that were first introduced in Android 11. So now you can use uh, the, the library version instead of calling into the platform APIs, makes it a little bit easier. Uh, similarly, Biometric 1.1 also integrated APIs and capability to sync with Android 11 changes. So again, you can now use the Android X library to get those uh, capabilities, especially around um, some of the authentication uh, capabilities that it has uh, for using biometrics there. So check that out. Um, it was also actually a substantial rewrite, and it reduced significantly the amount of size that that library is going to take up in your application, and also had lots of bug fixes uh, and functionality and robustness fixes along the way. Transition 1.4.0, uh, this is uh, a release that specifically adds KTX or, or uh, methods in the Kotlin extension library that we offer um, to add those capabilities for the Android X version. Uh, I believe there were KTX capabilities for the platform version of transitions, um, but now you can uh, get that with the Android X version of transitions as well. And then finally, Work Manager 2.5. This release is all about the new capabilities for applications that use multiple processes. Um, so check this out for that. But there's other capabilities that it adds as well, including an early version of a work manager tool that integrates with Android Studio. For that, you will need the, the latest Canary version of Android Studio, uh, which is named Arctic Fox. Uh, which we talked about on an earlier podcast episode, if you want to know some of the background around uh, the naming and version change in Android Studio. Uh, let's see, articles and videos, a couple of articles worth checking out. Uh, first of all, uh, there's an article from Manuel Vivo on Hilt um, around the view model component. So this is an API that allows you to scope types to a particular view component, as opposed to the previous API and approach of using activity retain component, uh, where scope types are shared by all of the view models. Uh, also, Work Manager 2.5. 
uh, call back to previous uh, blurb uh, about a minute ago. Uh, ben Weiss published an article on how to use Work Manager uh, for multiple processes using the new capabilities of 2.5 and also talks about some of the other changes in that library. And uh, finally, Motion Tags is a set of videos that we've had um, for a while now that are screencast showing you in depth how to use the API and the tool for motion layout. And these final two episodes in that screencast series are on key time cycle uh, that uh, helps you create uh, richer animations. Um, and key trigger, uh, which is the final episode, talks about uh, how to use the, the application to control things like having a uh, callback when your animation reaches a certain point in its life cycle or what we call a trigger. And a tip that uh, John Hofford passed on to me is uh, the reason that this is the final episode on triggers, um, on key trigger, is because that capability was actually used to create a lot of the rich animations that you saw in earlier versions of the screencast. So kind of an important capability um, for doing rich things with your animations and rich uh, trigger or action uh, oriented things uh, in particular. Finally, there was a new podcast episode that we just published uh, last night, I think it was, um, episode number 155 on Window Manager. Uh, so we talked to Rob Carr and Wale Ogunwale on the Window Manager team. This is um, some of the, the less obvious API or less obvious functionality in the platform because it exposes some API, but a lot of it is just sort of at the operating system level. This is the one of the workhorses that makes Android work specifically in the air of area of managing all those windows and all that UI surface. Um, we talked about some of the history and some of the inherent complexity uh, in dealing with Window Manager or in what Window Manager has to deal with. We also talked about some of the recent developments in that area and where Window Manager is going forward. So check out that podcast. Check out the article for now in Android 33 uh, for all of the links to all of the stuff that I mentioned here. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.